Eric Peterson on Williston Trending Topics, News Radio Live. Hello to you, Williston. Tom Simon, Williston Trending Topics, News Radio Live, Coyote Radio 98.5 FM. Good to have you with us. A special edition of the news uh, this afternoon. We're talking about the bank crisis, the interest rate, the housing market, and who better to talk that, about that than our own Eric Peterson from Proven Realty EXP here in Williston. Good afternoon, Eric. How are you doing? Doing great today, Tom. Um, overall, my uh, week has been in, uh, incredibly busy. The market is definitely heating up, but I was really sad to hear the Fed funds news again today, and I'm sure that's why we're getting this so urgently out to the people and to all of our listeners. It is pretty tragic. Yeah, and the headlines continue to mount up this afternoon and will continue to mount up throughout the evening. Uh, a couple of headlines that I saw already today, bank crisis could cast Paul over commercial real estate market and the big financial winners of the pandemic, talking about those that were fortunate enough to get those 2% loans. Uh, boy, if you have one of those, you want to hang on to it like gold, right? <laughs> Yeah, they're really hard to come by. And uh, right now, anybody with a two or three percent loan is realizing that they can't afford to sell their house. So it's almost like they're accidental landlords is the term being used for that category of people. And it's making it really hard to now shop other homes when you're used to two to three percent loans looking again, six to seven percent. And the fact that the Fed raised interest rates again for the ninth consecutive meeting is devastating to the financial markets, especially those lately that have been fragile. We talked about on our radio show Tuesday, yesterday, about all of the banks that are potentially um, fragile right now that could go out of business. And this is just terrible timing to add fuel to the fire to create that financial constraint to slow down the economy, especially those that are borrowing, that are trying to survive, that need money to live on, whether that's consumer credits, student loans, credit cards, car loans, it's going to be a lot more expensive moving forward and just a stupid move. There was a lot of thought that the Fed may back off because of the bank crisis in the last couple of weeks and uh, allow things to kind of settle down a little bit, uh, but they decided not to do that. Yeah, and it's um, ridiculous, obviously, but more importantly, it's short-sighted, right? They're trying to tame inflation, but any one of us the more money we have in the bank, the more we can fend off inflationary pressures and afford to pay more for our daily goods and services and our living. And it's just really detrimental to those folks on a fixed budget that are barely holding on. And if you take a look at some stats, it's really devastating. Let's just talk about what it means to the average consumer, Tom. Those folks that have credit card debt, those folks that have maybe looking for a car through Drew or um, anybody else, Here's just some statistics that I pulled that are staggering. So a year ago, a 30 year average fixed mortgage was 4.4%. Today it's 6.6. .6. So if you look at 50% more in borrowing costs just on a home, that keeps a lot of people on the sidelines. You can definitely shop around and we would recommend going to a local lender that can still get you about 6% or there under, but that's gonna be really hard to qualify for a loan on a mortgage because home prices have not been going down. New car loan a year ago, Tom, 4%. It's at 6.48% on average today. And if you start looking at those that are borrowing money in the financial uh, sector, the student loans, I have a daughter, for example, who's in college right now in PA school. Her loan rates a year ago were about 3.75%. They are now 4.99 and going up. And if you take a look at any of the other um, financial categories, it's terrible. But more importantly, if you just take a look at the tone as you alluded to, they are planning on raising rates again and are willing to do that in the future. And the Fed said today, quote, the US banking system is sound and resilient. Recent developments are likely to result in tighter credit conditions for households and businesses and to weigh on economic activity, hiring and inflation the extents of these effects is uncertain. So when you look at that, the Fed basically laid it out and said, we're gonna to continue to raise interest rates again, but we know that it's a dumb idea and it's terrible, terrible timing. The problem uh, really is, Eric, that the people who can least afford it are the ones that are hit harder, hardest by these moves, the ones that need credit cards and have to yep. use them. You know, if you're, Rich, if you're in the $250,000 and above 
range of income, you can afford to put your credit cards away in the safe for a few months, yep. not use them. But a lot of people use the credit cards to get them through the rough patches during the month. And now it's going to cost them extra money. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been there too, right? Like I was the poor college kid hustling my butt off, working three jobs, just trying to get my master's. And I also played credit card roulette, right? Where you would get all these offers in the mail. You would look around to see which one was the best. You would transfer to another one just to survive, right? That is what's happening around the country. And now instead of a 10, 15% credit card, they're pushing these rates up to 19, 20%. So that always has been the easiest and most convenient way to get money at the highest cost. Now it's gonna to continue to squeeze people even more. The next move would be if you had a home to pull out your equity, right? Home equity line of credit, three, 4%. Those have now doubled in rate. And that is really a lot harder to get that equity out because the value of these houses have gone down. So harder to get the money, harder to get the financial lifeline, if you will, to keep your family you know, surviving and fed and, you know, a roof over their head. And it's really going to cause a ripple effect through the economy and continue to be devastating for the average Americans. Mark, in Roundup in the Wall Street Journal uh, says uh, in, under the days of developments, it's Fed Day and it's a big one. The central bank raised interest rates by a quarter point, continuing its fastest hiking cycle in decades. Stocks initially rose after the announcement then headed south after Fed Chair Jerome Powell said during a press conference that a rate cut this year was not part of the central bank baseline. Yep, exactly. And if you take a look at about the short term devastating news in the stock market, we're down 500 points today. The fallout on the global scene is going to be magnified and there's going to be not a safe place to hide anymore. The only silver lining that we've seen in there in the financial markets a year ago, a savings account, a CD was one to two percent. Of course, with nine percent inflation, you'd be losing five, six, seven, eight, nine percent in real return. Now you can actually get five to five and a half on a money market, a high yield savings account or a CD. So if you don't need to touch the money and you're lucky enough to have a cushion, start looking again at some of these shorter term CDs and money market accounts to increase your yield. Some of those accounts are paying 40 year highs right now. We're talking with Eric Peterson, Proven Realty EXP. It has been a rocky day in the marketplace. Uh, the market watch CBS says in their latest article online, Things got really ugly after Powell left the podium with stocks accelerating their decline into the closing bell. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended the day down around 530 points, 1.6% down, while the S&P 500 slid 1.7. The NASDAQ Composite slumped 1.6. Rarely do you see all those things go down. Bonds rallied with the yield on the two-year Treasury note, dropping 19.8 basis points to 3.977%. Yields and debt prices moved opposite each other during the prior session and it jumped by the mo most in one day since June 5, 2009. So uh, that we could have stood to have Jerome Powell just stay off the podium today, it would have helped. Yeah, it would have been great. When I was first in the business, Alan Greenspan was the big guy out there, right? The Fed Funds chairman and everybody watched him. He was kind of like E.F. Hutton right from back in the day when he spoke everybody listened but he was just so much more strategic with his tone and the message and giving us cautiously optimistic which was one of the greatest terms ever put out by the fed that you know what we're cautiously hoping things are going to go better but when the fed themselves actually says we don't know the effects of it it could be devastating that's when you really got to wonder what they're looking to do are they trying to gain votes somehow politically? What is their actual motive? And how can we be protected from the idiocy of the Fed? As we mentioned yesterday on the air, Tom, and let me just bring up that point again from yesterday, $30 billion of private banks money was rallied to help um, offer that safety net and kind of a lifeline for the financial sector. That's because the financial sector, the private sector that is, does not trust the government, does not trust the decisions that are getting made, and this is going to be devastating. It really will. 
Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, uh, came out today talking uh, a different tone than she was over the weekend. On the weekend, uh, Eric, it was all about assuring people that the banks were solvent, uh, that the banks would uh, take care of themselves and that, and that the government would back them up. And now she's kind of backing off of that headline in Market Watch this afternoon. Did Yellen upstate's pal stock market declines after Treasury Secretary says she's not looking at expanding deposit insurance. So by not, right. uh, by not doing that, expanding deposit insurance, that uh, makes people f feel very uncomfortable if they're in a regional bank and that could cause them to move from the regional bank to one of the larger banks and uh, really destroy the regional banks in this country. It sure will, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on those small banks. The 182 that we talked about uh, yesterday of being at financial solvency risk if everybody rushes for um, withdrawals. And on those smaller banks, I don't know how you're going to hold up. We're lucky to have very good conservative banks in North uh, Dakota. We're also the only state with our own bank, the Bank of North Dakota. So obviously they have all these funds that are sitting in uh, reserve. So we're not worried about it here, but it's going to cause a ripple effect and a major financial fallout for all of the regional banks around the country, especially those exposed to crypto, high tech stocks such as the Silicon Valley areas. And it's really going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. It's really going to be interesting to see how the uh, Treasury Secretary uh, can justify bailing out the uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, and guaranteeing depositors over 250000 there and then turning her back on others. Today what happened is that uh, she was testifying before the Senate panel and she proceeded Powell at the Fed, as the Fed chief was asked about reports that officials are studying ways to expand the FDIC coverage to all deposits. Here's what she said, Eric. She said, okay. this is not something we have looked at. It's not something that we're considering she said. So she made it very clear uh, that uh, these other banks um, may not get the help that uh, the bank in Silicon Valley got. Yeah, which is unfair. It's obviously politically motivated. And when your constituents that give you money when you're running for office are from those Silicon Valley areas, and that's where your donors and your fan base is coming from, that is really making you wonder what their real intentions are. So what does that mean for us in North Dakota? Again, we're lucky to be here, lucky to be in the best economy in the whole country, if not the world. But thank your lucky stars every day that we're here and you have a good opportunity to make money. Real estate's still strong here. Prices are still high and we're still getting above average values. And our market is getting busier right now than it's been in the last three or four months. And if you drill down on these uh, numbers and on the, the activity in the news cycle in the last 24 hours, it means really, uh, if you're thinking about buying, now's the time to jump in the pool. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And I really believe that interest rates are going to continue to jump up. They've pulled back temporary, temporarily. So if you can get pre-qualified, find a house that you're looking for, because this might be a short window that's not going to last anytime soon with all these bailouts and all of the printing of the money and all of this continued inflationary pressure, that's gonna cause the Fed to raise rates again. They've already alluded to that now, but how many times more can they raise interest rates? And if they do, that's gonna affect mortgage rates, obviously, so lock in while you can. So let's talk before we get out of here about those individuals uh, who are fortunate enough to have a two or 3% uh, rate on their current mortgage and are looking to buy. Uh, can yep. they do it? Can they do it this way? Can they rent the current place that they're at and get a second mortgage for the new home? And and, and uh, what are the what, what what's in their way of doing that uh, as a re, as it relates to getting the, the second loan? Yeah, phenomenal question. And obviously, you're kind of stuck in that house now with your mortgage rate, right? It's hard to trade up when you, let's say, have a $300,000 house and you want to buy a $400,000 house. Your payment could be a thousand more a month. So keep the current house that you have. There is a strong rental market for single family rentals right now. You'll have no problem renting it out. And if you're locked in that two to 3% range, you're going to be able to rent it out for more than your payment is on your original home. 
Then if you can qualify, once you have that lease in hand that, hey, in so many days from now, I'm going to lease this property to you, and you go to your financial institution, it will be a lot easier for you to qualify for the new loan at the higher rate. You can also look into some arms, some adjustable rate mortgages, where they're gonna be at a lower rate, maybe one point lower than the current 30 year fixed, with the idea that you're gonna to wanna to refinance at the end of that term. Strap yourself in, huh? Yeah, strap yourself in. It's gonna to continue to be a wild ride. It's never more important than it is right now to get good financial advice. Make sure that your team is experienced. Make sure that whoever you're working with can advise you and guide you appropriately. And that you have somebody that's gonna to go to battle for you and knows how to help you navigate the turbulence in the market. Eric, we'll see you next Tuesday, if not sooner. Thanks for joining well, us. Sounds Thank good, you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Eric Peterson, uh, Proven Realty EXP with us on a special edition of our real estate show. Good to have you with us. Stand Thanks, by. Thanks, Tom.